Are you the kind of person to think medieval warfare was just swords and shields? Think again. While they may not have had electricity or combustion engines, medieval and early modern societies were still capable of producing some seriously devastating weapons. From explosive hellburners to medieval machine guns and the coveted Greek fire. Join us as we take a look at some of the craziest medieval superweapons. Your mind won't believe these actually existed. Number 10. Hellburners Who needs complexity when you have simplicity? The Dutch Hellburner proves this point, as it was nothing more than a ship filled to the brim with gunpowder, designed to drift into enemy territory and explode from a slow-burning fuse. While not many of these Hellburners were made, they were each loaded with around 7,000 pounds of gunpowder, making them a force to be reckoned with. The idea for the Hellburner came from Italian military engineer Federigo Gimbelli during the Eighty Years' War between Spain and the Netherlands. Gimbelli tried to sell his idea to both sides of the conflict, but the Dutch were the ones who ultimately hired him. The Hellburners were instrumental in breaking the Spanish siege of Antwerp in 1585. Concealed among 32 decoy ships set ablaze, two Hellburners were set afloat towards the Spanish Armada, docked on the River Scheldt. Although only one detonated, the explosion claimed the lives of over 1,000 Spanish soldiers and could be heard up to 50 miles away. Despite their success, Hellburners were expensive to build and were rarely used afterward. It was a case of less is more, as the Hellburner's simplicity proved to be incredibly effective. Number 9. The Choco New Ancient Machine Gun Modern machine guns and AR or Uzis changed the way people fought wars. But what you may not know is that this idea has been around for quite some time. In fact, the Chinese Chokonu crossbow could fire up to 10 bolts in 20 seconds. Talk about a rapid-fire weapon! These repeating crossbows were first used during the Warring States period of the 3rd century BC and remained in use by the Chinese military for centuries, all the way up to the 19th century AD. But as impressive as the Chokunu was, its ability to fire multiple projectiles was really its only advantage. It wasn't particularly accurate and lacked penetrating power, which meant that users often had to dip its bolts in poison to make shots lethal. One chronicler even went so far as to deride it as a self-defense weapon suitable only for Confucian scholars, meaning non-warriors, and palace women. Nonetheless, the Chokunu paved the way for more advanced and deadly weapons, including the modern assault rifle. So, while it may not have been the most impressive weapon on the battlefield, its impact on military technology cannot be denied. Number 8. Greek Fire – Still Never Duplicated The Byzantines knew all too well that mixing fire and ships can be a recipe for disaster. But they also knew how to turn that danger into a weapon. They created a crazy concoction known as Greek Fire that could be used on land and sea. This fiery liquid could be squirted from a hose or launched like a projectile and was almost impossible to extinguish. Legend has it that a Greek Christian named Callinicus invented Greek fire sometime between 668 and 678 AD, but the exact recipe was a closely guarded secret. It's believed to have included some ingredients like petroleum, naphtha, quicklime, sulfur, resin, and potassium nitrate. But the Byzantines were not spilling the beans on that recipe. And who could blame them? With Greek fire on their side, they built a mighty empire that lasted almost 800 years. During the Crusades, the Lord of Joinville witnessed Greek fire in action and left this description. The tail of fire that trailed behind it was as big as a great spear, and it made such a noise as it came that it sounded like the thunder of heaven. It looked like a dragon flying through the air. Such a bright light did it cast that one could see all over the camp as though it were day, because of the great mass of fire and the brilliance of the light that it shed. Greek fire was so effective that it was used well into the Middle Ages, but unfortunately it disappears from the historical record after the sack of Constantinople by the Crusaders in 1204 AD. Maybe it was used after that, who knows, but one thing's for sure, the recipe for Greek fire has been lost to time. Number 7. Chinese Gunpowder – Fire Lances Although the term firearm may instantly bring to mind images of modern-day guns, its definition encompasses any weapon that uses gunpowder to launch a projectile. 
It may come as a surprise, but firearms were used in China long before they became commonplace in Europe. In fact, the Chinese Fire Lance, a spear with a firework attached to one end, was an early form of firearm that could launch either a projectile or poison at the enemy upon exploding. Although they had limited range and accuracy, they were incredibly dangerous up close. The Fire Lance dates back to the 12th century AD during the Song Dynasty. Chinese alchemists had discovered gunpowder and quickly began experimenting with its explosive potential. By 1150 AD, the Fire Lance was being used in battle, and it proved particularly effective in defensive situations, such as defending city walls from besiegers. Even though the technology was rudimentary, it helped the Chinese gain an advantage in warfare and demonstrated the potential for explosive weapons in combat. Number 6. Turtle Ships Back in the medieval era, some militaries had to get creative when faced with a much larger enemy army. That's where the Korean turtle ship or Panuxin comes in. Admiral Yi Sun Shin had the brilliant idea to add an outer shell for extra protection, giving birth to the turtle ship during the Seven Years' War, 1592 to 1598 AD. This turtle ship was no ordinary warship. It had a giant dragon head on the front, perfect for intimidating the enemy. And if that wasn't enough, some crews even burned stinky stuff in the dragon's mouths to create a toxic smoke screen. Talk about a bad breath attack! The hull of the turtle ship was also plated with metal to shield it from enemy fire and boarding parties. Plus, they even had spikes to keep enemies at bay. It was like a porcupine on the water. The turtle ship was the perfect counter to the Japanese Navy's ship-to-ship -ship combat. Korean commanders would row their turtle ships right into the middle of Japanese formations and start wreaking havoc. And with their close-range cannons, the Japanese were toast. Thanks to the turtle ship, Admiral Yi Sun Shin became a Korean hero, and the turtle ship lives on in history as a symbol of cleverness and badassery. Number 5. Trebuchets, the Ingenium From the Latin word ingenium meaning ingenious device. So what is the trebuchet? Don't be fooled by their simple design. Trebuchets were the ultimate tool for medieval armies looking to bring down enemy fortifications. They were so effective that some rulers constructed castles with fortified walls just to withstand their power. But let's clear up some misconceptions. First off, trebuchets are often mistaken for catapults, but they are actually more advanced, capable of launching heavier projectiles over longer distances. And did you know that they are ancient technology dating back over 2,000 years? The Chinese, Arabic, and Byzantine armies all used trebuchets in their own way, with the Europeans encountering them during the Crusades in the 11th century. It's no wonder they quickly became a staple of medieval siege warfare, earning nicknames like Bad Neighbor, Bad Relation, and God's Stone Thrower. So how do these ingenious devices work? Well, they use a throwing arm with a counterweight to launch massive objects over long distances. In earlier European trebuchets, humans were used to provide the necessary pulling power, but the invention of the counterpoise trebuchet eliminated the need for human strength. With such a long and impressive history, the trebuchet remains one of the most fascinating and awe-inspiring weapons ever created. Number 4. Chinese Fire Arrow Let's talk about the Chinese Fire Arrow, the oldest rocket weapon used in warfare. These little babies could make a bang that could be heard up to 15 miles away and incinerate an area of 2,000 square feet. That's like burning down an entire football field with just one shot. The Fire Arrow's first official record was in 969 AD during the Song Dynasty, and it soon became a staple in Chinese military tactics. Later, during the Jin Dynasty, they were successfully used to defend their capital against a Mongol invasion in 1232. The Mongols, being the sneaky conquerors they were, developed their own rocket weapons and soon spread the use of rocket weapons throughout the Middle East and Europe. But how were they made? The fire arrow was basically a bamboo arrow with a hollow iron or brass head filled with gunpowder, which would explode upon impact. Later, they added fins to the shaft to stabilize the arrow in flight. It's interesting to note that the fire arrows were also used for signaling and even for entertainment purposes. Today, the fire arrow lives on as a testament to human ingenuity and the power of innovation. Number 3. The Colossal Bombard Cannon of Orban In the year 1452, the Byzantine Empire was facing a dire situation. The Ottoman Empire, under the leadership of the young Sultan Mehmed II, was emerging as a new and ominous threat. 
Emperor Constantine XI, at the helm of a weakened and crumbling empire, knew that he needed to act fast to defend his people. Enter Orban, a skilled Hungarian mercenary and siege engineer, who proposed building a massive bronze cannon or bombard to defend the city against the Ottomans. Orban's design was truly impressive, with a barrel that was fortified with 8 inches of bronze to withstand the force of the blast. The cannon measured a whopping 27 feet in length, with a diameter of 30 inches, and required a team of 200 men and 60 oxen to transport. It was capable of firing a cannonball weighing up to 1,500 pounds, and the first test shot was so powerful that it buried the projectile 6 feet into the ground when it landed. Unfortunately, when Emperor Constantine couldn't pay Orban's high fee, the enterprising siege engineer took his design and expertise to the opposing Ottoman army. Sultan Mehmed was more than happy to pay for Orban's services, and when he saw the final product, he called it a horrifying and extraordinary monster. During the siege of Constantinople in 1453, the massive bombard became the centerpiece of a devastating artillery campaign that included over 60 additional cannons and numerous trebuchets. The bombard pummeled Constantinople's walls relentlessly, paving the way for Mehmed's troops to storm the city and claim it as their own. Despite being considered one of the best defended cities in medieval Europe, Constantinople could not withstand the power of Orban's bombard, and the Ottoman Empire emerged victorious. Number 2. War Wagons The war wagon is like the medieval equivalent of the modern battle tank, but it was actually the Chinese who came up with the idea first, way back in the 5th century BC. However, it was the Hussites who really put the war wagon on the map by using them to great effect in their wars against the Catholic Church starting in 1419. And let's not forget about the first metal tanks used by Great Britain in World War I's Battle of fleurs Corselet in 1916. So whether you're talking about the Ugachua, the war wagon, or modern tanks, it's clear that humans have always had a fascination with armored vehicles and their potential on the battlefield. These bad boys were made of hardened wood and positioned in circular formations on the battlefield, creating a kind of temporary fortress. Archers would fire arrows through holes in the walls, while soldiers with flails would defend against enemy troops. And when the enemy was in disarray, more soldiers and cavalry would stream out of the wagons and overwhelm them. The Hussites used their war wagons to defeat larger and better equipped armies. Talk about punching above their weight! Sure, they may have ultimately lost the Hussite wars, but they still demonstrated the effectiveness of the war wagon. Number 1. Longbows Even a fancy armored knight couldn't always hold their own against a scrappy peasant armed with a longbow. The Welsh longbow was a weapon to be reckoned with, measuring a whopping six feet long and made from tough yew wood. Its draw strength was nearly double that of a modern hunting bow, making it capable of punching through some types of armor. In fact, one English knight claimed that he had taken an arrow from a Welsh longbowman that went through his thigh, pierced his chainmail, and even managed to take out his horse. The Normans likely picked up the longbow from the Welsh after taking over England in 1066. Edward I put them to good use against William Wallace at the Battle of Falkirk in 1298 AD, and Henry V's longbowman triumphed over the heavily armored French at the Battle of Agincourt in 1415 AD. Longbows were so effective and relatively easy to make that they became the backbone of England's homeland defense. The catch was that they required lots of training and skill to use well. Laws dating back to the 13th century stipulated that every Englishman making over two pounds a year had to own a longbow, and all males up to age 60 were expected to know how to use them. With their power and popularity, it's no wonder that the longbow became a key weapon of the Middle Ages.